Hello, welcome back to Google Minister Sheila Fnering. In this episode, I'll be sharing with you a couple of examples that explains how you can kind of generate a sine wave based on a frame that's kind of affecting uh, each and every point's color of an object. So it's uh, this is the final result, one of the example. Um, so what's really going on here? It's a it's a custom attribute that's being passed from geometry nodes into the shader. Okay, so this is uh, still, I think, because Blender 2.93 Alpha is still something that's being worked on, so things might change. But however, I think it's, it's getting uh, easier and easier to do this. Um, so let me explain what's going on. This is basically I started with default cube but I delete everything so I, en I end up with something that's empty totally empty however I have this icosphere um, with radius of 1 subdivision of 5 I can reduce this so it doesn't matter everything will update on the fly in a way that um, I can just replace this with anything including UV sphere or or even a cube so geometry can just goes in or oh, cube cube actually doesn't have vertices um, so icosphere is better um, so you can see if I play back the time uh, we have something that going on with the icosphere with the vertex color you can see also here if I go in in time there's a this custom attributes that's changing in value affecting the shader which is this color ramp okay and this is the factor coming in from geometry so this is I think really interesting and powerful especially if in the future in the near future we, if we are using like instance objects and you want to transfer color custom attributes and value this is one way you can think of it so i'm using this uh, first of all there's this time this is something that i created uh, this is a, just a python of time just if, I, if you want to create it yourself you just create a value and then hash frame that's how you create this. This is a time, and I want to inject the time into into geometry nodes. This is how we do it. We use combine x y z, and then we just use attribute vector math. And in this case, I'm just using attribute randomize as an offset for time. So after I do this, the time will get offset. Um, in this case, you can see with the value here, random x, y, z. So it's become a vector value. And especially take a look at random z. That's the time that has been offset by this random value. And the next thing I did <clears throat> is to use this attribute math sign. Uh, so I'm, there's a sign functions that I apply for every custom attribute here. This is the time that has been offset. And then I turn it into a sine wave so it's become a value between minus one and one. It's going ups and down. That's why we have this kind of result. And in order for this to work, you actually need to bring in the geometry and join it together. Because if you, uh, let me use control option right and then just cut here this is actually fairly new with the latest blender 2.93 you can kind of block the data you can see if I block this data we don't get this custom attribute flowing into the shader so this is um, actually really important okay so <clears throat> let me show you another example Okay, 
This, this is the same deal. The same icosphere, it's just a little bit longer. So what's going on here is I'm trying to... Let me try to explain it as a single sentence. We have instance objects, cylinder or icosphere, that's being generated on the fly, like this. Okay, so they are hidden. And I'm using the instance to drive the sine wave animation here. And this is just a geometry nodes. Um, anytime I can just drag and drop the instance. So we have um, these instance objects scaling and positions that's following the original um, object. Let me use the cylinder. So there's a lot of things going on here and I'll, I'll also uh, let me explain it. So we have the same thing, we have time. So this is just a single time un unless you until you give like a offset time offset and randomize the time this is just a single time right and if it's just a single value you can just <clears throat> for example like multiply the time using sine wave and you can map the sine wave this is actually kind of nice because you can kind of normalize uh, the time this way if it's a single value it's very easy and you can actually just plug it into plug this into the icosphere or circle in this case um, I block the value here using the control option right click if I enable it you can see now the icosphere is behaving like more like a bubble right this is the sine wave affecting the radius of the master object. The instant object is of course just the cylinder, right? I could, for example, pipe in the circle. Now we have a cir circle object controlling the position of the instant cylinder. It's still kind of behaving like a kind of like a bubble or like a um, yeah, of course, like a sine wave, right? So that should be easy to understand. I can, so currently it's doing this. I can block again, control option, right? And it just slides there. It's, it blocks the data. So this one will not get calculated. So now let's see this, this time value goes there. This is how I inject, inject the time so I can offset it and kind of like vectorizing vectorizing the value so what's going on here of course the the value will become point attribute so things just things kind of starting to get a little bit more complex right in, if you're doing this kind of thing but but don't worry this is like all pretty easy to explain so we have a time coming in and I want to inject the time so here I'm using attribute randomize so I generating generating a custom attribute and I call it offset and I just add it into time so this this will vectorize the time so I have random time and then I use the sign functions again and this is just to offset the time so it never goes to zero kind of I kind of wanted to normalize the time a little bit and then after I do that I'm using attribute color RAM this one is actually clamping clamping the value it's uh, it's difficult to explain but you can see the result anyway in this case and then I use another offset and multiplier here so all the values going in anytime you can always like turn on and off kind of mute by tapping M you can mute any nodes so you can see what's going on you can see the attributes changing so 
here I'm using I'm trying to understand this attribute convert because this this thing is kind of still kind of tricky you can kind of promote or convert values into polygon or point edge corner um, which will in effect will transfer the, the color data into the shader so it's a, still kind of tricky for me but anyway in the end we need to join the geometry right remember like I said the group input the original geometry needs to go in to the join geometry in order for everything to work so I have three different materials also um, however this this one doesn't seem to work I, I, I might need to fix this or maybe there's a bug still with 2.93 in theory this should work I'm simply applying the material here it should we should have um, result here however we don't need to worry about that for now all you need to to understand is that um, I'm also using this to control the point scale so I'm using the offset value which is originally just time that's being vectorized and then turn it to sine wave so it's kind of going kind of like breathe in breathe out kind of motion so we have this um, in here I'm using I'm typing this object instance input up here so we can look at it under modifier this is why I can easily drag and drop it <clears throat> you should uh, also take a look at video by red gem 9 channel um, he actually explained this in a in more like a motion uh, motion graphics kind of way similar to cinema 40 I don't have cinema 40 background but I'm just want to understand the whole thing my, my own way okay so ideally what's gonna what I want to happen is that just uh, the color should be transferred into the in, into the instance objects somehow maybe it's already possible but I, I just don't know how maybe each of the instance objects need to have material and then each instance also need to have something going on with geometry nodes okay so that's uh, that's my conclusion for now the cool thing about this of course you can always remesh remesh the holding it's become a single object and maybe soon we will we should be able to kind of transfer the color somehow but yeah this is the sign basically what I want to explain is a time that can be factorized and turn it to a sine wave affecting the instance objects so yeah hopefully you'll find this interesting let me know what to think and I'll see you next time thank you bye